So let's move on to Sir for the moment. Uh, recent research has said that the five most commonly recurring dreams are being naked in public, uh, climbing upstairs or a hill, losing your teeth, arriving totally unprepared for an exam, and flying. Mine has been charged by a bull. Judy's is being menaced by a stationary but massive wave, just sort of hanging above you, just above you. Probably um, I wish I could surf, really. <laughs> you should. I'll, 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 I'll teach you. Um, <laughs> so we got hold of Ian Wallace, who runs uh, a group, uh, something called uh, the Dream Work Organisation, which analyses the dreams of company employees to help improve their performance <coughs> at work. And we sent him up to Edinburgh to do a little bit of public counselling. Hello, I'm Ian Wallace. I'm a dream analyst. And I'm here in Edinburgh today to analyse people's dreams. The three most common dreams are being naked in public, your teeth falling out, being unprepared for an exam. Everyone dreams. We have to dream. It's a biological necessity. I have a dream which is um, it's a recurrent dream whereby I walk into a public toilet I sit on the toilet and then the door isn't there, or I sit on the toilet, the door is shut, I feel safe, and then I look up and there are people looking down at me from above the cubicle and I feel really very uncomfortable in my dream and very vulnerable and exposed. Any time you dream about going to the toilet, and we all do, mm -hmm. is about wanting to get rid of something. Mm -hmm. But you actually have to get rid of it in public. Right. And when you do that, to actually voice those feelings in public, it makes you feel very uncomfortable and very vulnerable. So there is something you have to voice mm -hmm. and you have to say, you have to get rid of, mm -hmm. and that has to be done publicly. So even bottling you, things up a wee bit. Yes, yeah, so mm -hmm. even though you're trying to appear very strong and capable on the outside, you have to let people know how you feel. Yeah. It's much better for you and much better for them. Okay, thank you. I was in this house and basically I just ran down the stairs, ran out the front door onto a porch and there's basically this clothesline hanging across the porch and it seemed to have various coats I'd worn throughout my childhood. It must have been about 20. Okay, this dream's a, a coming-of-age dream. What you're looking at is how you've been for the past 20 years and the various guises and transformations you've come through and now you realise that you can leave all that behind. It's just strung out there for you to see. So it's just about turning from a boy into a man. It was the first time I'd moved away from home and okay. I was actually, uh, you know, living away and um, you know, it's all new to me, so it makes a lot of sense. Well, I used to have a reoccurring dream where I was trying to take off. Uh, people were running after me, and it was like an old-fashioned plane where it kind of bu bumped along and I couldn't quite take off, and I kept trying to. And as these people got closer and closer, I then, just before, sort of seconds before they actually got to me, I finally actually took off. OK, the flying dream is about freedom and liberation. And in the dream, there's something you're trying to break free from. That's why those people are chasing you. You're trying to escape from them. And if you know you keep running and running and go faster and faster, eventually you'll take off and be free. People often ask me, why are dreams so important? The more you understand your dreams, the more you'll understand yourself, and the more you'll understand what you want to do and how to do it.